Hello everyone, Game Citizen here. Today we're gonna talk about money, real money, not Zenny. So Gravity operates in the American stock market, so they have to make it public their financial status. This is great for us to check how well the company is doing. We'll go into detail over how much Gravity is making with Ragnarok Online, with the mobile games, but let me start by saying that they're doing pretty fine. They're making millions every year. If this is not a successful company, then I don't know what it is. So let's just start with their most recent financial report. The links to these documents are in the description box down below. For the year of 2022, last year, Ragnarok Online, the computer MMO, was responsible for 18.7% of the total revenue. Most of their money comes from mobile games. Ragnarok Origin, 35.5, Eternal Love, 20.1, Ragnarok X Next Generation 16.7 It's interesting to see that Eternal Love still makes more money than the classic Ragnarok Online, but I'm pretty sure that by next year, the revenue generated by Eternal Love will drop significantly. Here's the thing about Ragnarok Online, the classic game that we play. The revenue is very stable. The total revenue in dollars in 2022 was almost $69 million. In 2019, Ragnarok Online was responsible for 10.5% or $32.9 million. In the same year, Eternal Love was 80%, $215 million. And now Eternal Love is even way less. 2017, Ragnarok Online was responsible for 11.2% of the total revenue or $28.8 million. 2013, Ragnarok Online was 40% of the total revenue or $14.6 million. Now, if we go really back to the past, 2006, the oldest um, the report that they have, I think it's from 2005. In 2006, Ragnarok Online represented 77.3% of the total revenue, or $33.2 million. In 2003, Gravity relied basically just on Ragnarok Online, and their total revenue of the company was $36.8 million. Okay, so let's make sense of these numbers. In 2013, Ragnarok made a gross revenue of $14.6 million. Now, compare with last year, 2022. Ragnarok made almost $68.8 million. We should take inflation into consideration as well. I took a look online and considering USA dollar, one dollar back in 2013, had the same buying power as $1.31 nowadays. Okay, so correcting to inflation, Ragnarok in 2013 would have made $19 million nowadays. Let's also correct the values from 2006. It made $33.2 million that year. $1 in 2006 would be the same as $1.51 nowadays. This means that this $33.2 million would be equal to $50 million nowadays. Okay, so we can already see two things. One is that Ragnarok still brings a lot of money to gravity. If Ragnarok is dead, then this is a really profitable zombie. The other thing to notice is that the revenue generated by Ragnarok nowadays is higher than in 2006, and that there is a big drop in 2013. In 2006, even if we correct to inflation, it would be $50 million. And last year, it got $69 million. So how can we make sense of that? How can nowadays generate more money than during the golden age? Well, there are a few reasons. And here I'm speculating a little bit because the report doesn't really make these things clear. First, this is the total revenue. It does not take into account the costs. In the past, most servers were operated by other companies. So a lot of that money was from licenses. The good aspect to licenses is that you don't need to care about the personal costs. What this means is that in 2006, Ragnarok was generating more profit to Gravity than nowadays. In the report, Gravity does inform the total cost it has, but it does not provide details on where these costs are being allocated. So I don't know how much Gravity spends on Ragnarok Online. Nowadays, most servers are operated by Gravity herself through the child companies. So for instance, Iro, the international one, is managed by War Portal, but War Portal is a child company that belongs to Gravity. Gravity herself actually is owned by Gong Ho. Gong Ho was the company that distributed Ragnarok in Japan, and it was by far the most profitable server, and they had a lot of money, so they ended up buying over 50% of the shares. 
So they control gravity. The CEO of Gung Ho is the CEO of Gravit, but that doesn't matter for this video. In 2013, most servers were distributed by other companies. That is why the revenue was not so high, because it does seem like 2013 there was a drop there. We have to take into account the microtransactions, which became far more aggressive as time went by. They were already being done in 2013, but not as aggressive as nowadays. Also, still many servers were being operated by other companies through licenses. In 2006, all the revenue came from subscription. There was no microtransactions and it still made a lot of money. But that's because the player base in 2006 was in the house of hundreds of thousands. In 2004, in Taiwan and Hong Kong, there was a peak of 350,000 players. 2006, Taiwan, Hong Kong, 130,000 players. Thailand, 70,000. Japan, 75,000. China, 28,000. Korea, 13,000. USA, USA is Iro in this case, 8,000. And this table does not include numbers from other surveys, such as the Brazilians one. And it's impressive that Gravity gets a revenue of almost $69 million from Ragnarok Online in 2022. That is still a lot of money. Now, as a company, Gravity had a huge leap when it started making mobile games. Before that, Ragnarok was the main one, and always it was the only one that would really bring a lot of revenue. But with Eternal Love, especially Eternal Love, things changed. In 2019, Eternal Love generated a revenue of $250 million. The cost to operate mobile games is high, but still $250 million is a lot. But Gravity knows that mobile games have a very short lifespan. In that same report, Gravity informs that, and here I'm quoting the document, in contrast to online games, the life cycle of a mobile game is relatively short and generally lasts from 6 to 24 months while reaching its peak popularity within the first three months. I know some of you guys enjoyed mobile games inspired by Ragnarok. I understand how it can be hard to play Ragnarok nowadays, and mobile games offer a way to have a bit of Ragnarok in our daily lives. But I think they are money grabbers. They are disposable. They are not made from a place of passion. They make it so that they can make a lot of money really fast and quickly throw it away. They can't do that to Ragnarok Online because it carries the IP, the intellectual property, upon which they make all these mobile games. And Ragnarok still brings a good amount of profit to Gravity. And it is stable. From reading Gravity's financial reports, what I learned the most is how stable Ragnarok is. Yeah, it represents less than one-fifth of the total, total revenue, but that revenue won't disappear in a year or two. And that is important. Gravity is constantly trying to get a hit in mobile gaming, like Eternal Love was. Look at this list. This is the list of games released in 2022. Ragnarok The Lost Memories, Ragnarok Tactics 2, Ragnarok Monsters Arena, Ragnarok Arena, Ragnarok Begins, Ragnarok Origin, Ragnarok V or 5 Returns, Ragnarok Labyrinth NFT, Ragnarok X Next Generation. These are 9 mobile games based on Ragnarok. Nine, just last year. And these mobile games generated a lot of revenue for Gravity, a lot. The total revenue they got from all mobile games in 2022 was about $285 million. They have 218 game developers. Most of them work on the mobile games. Look at this. For game support and customer service, they had a total of 54 employees. 54 game masters or people in charge of game maintenance in general. 25 were for domestic customer service, and I don't know if this means Korea and Japan or just Korea. And 29 employees for the overseas customer support team. This means that there are 29 people providing support outside of Korea, and probably Japan, for all games, not just Ragnarok Online. All games, including mobile ones. How many of these are responsible for Ragnarok Online? And clearly, they will guess most of these people to provide support for Taiwan, Hong Kong, Macau, and Thailand. Because together, in 2022, they generated $51.5 million. That's Ragnarok Online, our classic beloved MMO. 51.5 out of the total of 68.8 Ragnarok generated. This means that Taiwan, Hong Kong, Macau, plus Thailand, they're responsible for 75% of the revenue Ragnarok generates. 
When it comes to mobile games, then yeah, you have other markets like USA that gets a bit heavier, but is it still lightweight compared to Taiwan. For mobile games, Taiwan is responsible for over one third of the total revenue. That's a lot. I mostly play on the Brazilian server. I'm pretty sure that there must be only one employee in gravity responsible for that server. And that person probably is responsible for all other non-Eastern servers like Iro and the European one. Now, a curiosity. As everyone knows, Ragnarok Online is based on the Korean comics, a manhwa called Ragnarok, created by Myung Jing Lee. I think I'm pronouncing his name correctly. He receives a small percentage of all revenue generated with the Ragnarok brand. Last year, Gravity paid him about $1.5 million. That, that's good, right? Okay, so we talked a lot about numbers. So to finish the video, let's talk about actual profit. All these numbers I said were gross revenue, so they don't take into account the costs. Including all games, including everything, the total revenue Gravity made in 2022 was $367.9 million. But after we calculate all the costs and the tax, how much profit Gravity made in 2022? The net profit was about $65.9 million. This means they had a profit margin of 17.9%. Not bad, not bad at all. It is hard to say whether they will manage to keep their profit since most of it comes from mobile games. I will finish this video with one question. Gravity, if you make so many million dollars every year, why don't you spend more on Ragnarok Online? It is the foundation of the company. It is the, the ground of the company. It is the game upon which all other mobile games depend. They rely on it. Why do you put such an aggressive microtransaction system in Ragnarok Online? Leave all that gacha to the mobile games. Gravity, you make far too much money with Ragnarok. And you don't seem to care about it that much. Not nowadays. Anyway, this was Game Citizen and see you next video.